There is a long time to talk about partial implementation of anything so much. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Uh Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Um, thanks for the invitation. And um, yeah, I've already had a lot of interesting conversations with different people about topics that are related to this talk. So it's really a great combination of a group of people here. And yeah, good to have everybody together. So, um, yeah, so my talk is entitled Market Equivalent Relations, Localizations, and Equipment. And it's mostly about the content of this paper, uh, the categories of Market Equivalent Relations and Localizations, where I have the link here. It's the only at the end there's a little bit of some abstract perspective that is not in the paper. And yeah, I should mention, I think uh, I, uh, with enough time, so feel free to ask questions. And also, my apologies, I'm a bit jet lagged, so <laughs> I might be a bit more confused than usual. But um, yeah. Okay. So, my talk is divided into three parts. In the beginning, I will talk about exact completion of regular hyper doctrines as a localization, then about derived functors, and then about the equipment. So the last part is not in the paper. Um, okay, and so let's start right out with some definitions. So by a regular hyper doctrine, I mean an index coset on a category with finite limits where uh, all the fibers have finite meets, um, re-indexing preserves finite meets, and we have left adjoints re-indexing, written as extension classification, uh, that is uh, subject to the Frobenius condition and the back Chevrolet condition. So this looks very similar to what Pino showed us under the name of elementary existential doctrine, I think. In particular, we have the same uh, Frobenius and Chevrolet condition. So, but it's a little bit different uh, because I'm requiring the Chevrolet condition for all pull express. Whereas, I think for the elementary existential doctrines, there are uh, you only require Beck Chevrolet essentially for squares that are definable from finite products. Hmm. Um, and so, in the paper, these are called index frames, but. And I went back to this uh, hyper doctrine terminology here in the spirit of the meeting. Um, so, okay, so, and yeah, I actually have a reason to have this stronger vector value condition here. Um, and maybe I will point out later the point where we do this. Um, or maybe not. Um, okay. So some examples. Uh, some of them people might already have given. So for a local uh, complete hyping algebra frame X, we can just define an index coset on set where the predicates on a set A are just the functions into the local with the pointwise ordering. So that's always a regular hyper doctrine. In Tripos, and then the very important example is the effective tripos, where the predicates on a set A are functions into the power set of the naturals, ordered in this way that the app already explained to us, I think. And here I also want to emphasize some a variation of that, that I call primitive recursive hyper doctrine. There's slightly effective tripos, but in the definition of the entailment relation, you have the restriction that the function primitive recursive, and so that's not a tripos. Just as an example, it's not a tripos. The other two are uh, triposes, which means we always also have uh, right adjoints re-indexing and implication in the fibers, so the fibers are adding algebras, and more of a generic predicate. Um, and all this will come up a little bit later, but for now this doesn't play a role. Um, okay, so given a regular hyper doctrine, we can define its exact completion 
And this is also known as the tripos to topos construction, but it only deserves to be called tripos to topos construction if H is a tripos. Um, <laughs> um, so, so this is the category where the objects are partial equivalence relations, uh, so consisting of an object in the base and a binary predicate in the index poset satisfying the symmetry and transitivity uh, and uh, judgments in the morphisms are functional relations. So that means a morphism from A with a partial field solution rho to B sigma is a predicate on A cross B satisfying these judgments which is expressed in the internal logic of the regular hyper doctrine that uh, the relation is single valued and total and compatible with the partial uh, uh, equivalence relations. And so we want to show that this category is always bar exact. And moreover, it is the uh, free bar exact category on the regular hyper doctrine in the sense that it constitutes a left wire joint to a forgetful functor from exact categories to regular hyper doctrines. And this is proven, I think, in this paper by my idea of the And um, yes? Just a quick your mission existential in the definition of composition. Is X one? Ah, yeah, yeah, right. Sorry, it's obvious, so, but it's. Uh, yeah. yeah, the exist Y. Yeah, yeah, I forgot the exist Y. Right. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So the composition. The relation of composition uses this extension, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so again some examples. So if I take the exact completion of the regular hyper doctrine coming from a locale, I get a category that's equivalent to the chief topos. If I take the exact completion of the effective tripos, I get the effective topos. And if I take the exact completion of the primitive recursive hyper doctrine, I get a list arithmetic free topos in, in the sense I think was introduced by Joyal and it's, uh, developed. It's not exactly the same, but we discuss it. <laughs> what, what is not exactly the same? Because the B is only natural number objects, not the arbitrary set. Mm -hmm. but we discuss I mean, it. this is not the free. A, 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 a list arithmetic pre topos but it is a list arithmetic pre topos I think. Yes, but it's um, not a Julian one. No worries. Ah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No worries. So, uh, yeah, actually, I wanted to mention the, the term arithmetic universe. I want to say it's a. Yeah, it's yeah it is, but yes. uh, not a Julian Yeah, it's not the, not the syntactic unit construct. Um, okay, so. Now, I want to give an alternative characterization of the exact completion by a different universal property that goes to an intermediate category uh, and is motivated by this homotopy theory. So, the intermediate category is, uh, has the, I write, C angle bracket H, so for the exact completion, I have square brackets here, I have angle brackets. And the objects are the same as in the square bracket category, partial equivalence relations. But now the morphisms are just uh, arrows in the base category that, is fine, that are compatible with the partial equivalence relations in the obvious sense that they satisfy this judgment. Um, and Pino already mentioned it. And so this is the completion of, not C, but H actually, the completion of H under the set portion. Um, and this is also developed in this elementary portion of the student paper by my um, so, And so in the following, I want to uh, show that the exact completion is a localization of the descent portion of completion. Um, and for this, uh, we define a functor from the descent portion of completion exact completion, which is the obvious functor, which maps uh, the identical objects, and given uh, uh, an morphism in the descent portion of completion, we get a functional relation in the, let's say, obvious way that so if f is the arrow in the base, we define a binary predicate uh, 
that saying f of x, y, if rho x, x, so this is a short term for uh, x being the support of rho, then because it's a partial equation, and sigma has to relate f, x, and y. So that is basically how we get a relation out of a function, but then we close up under the partial equivalence relations and restrict to the support of those. So that's the obvious thing. And then one can show that amorphism in the descent portion completion is inverted by this functor if and only if it is internally injective and essentially surjective. So injective meaning uh, so f is injective internally means that if I have two uh, let's say elements so that's, these are abstract variables that I call them elements so I have two elements of A that are in the support of rho and their images are related by sigma then they already have to be related by rho um, so that's how you write essential the inject injectivity in the setting, the essential subjective means that if something is in the support of the co-domain, then there must be, exist something in the support of the domain that is mapped to something equivalent to the U. Um, okay, and then, so these are the arrows that are inverted by E, and I'm gonna call an arrow a weak equivalence if, uh, if it is inverted by E. And so now we're going to show that this category is the localization of this category at the weak equivalences. Before doing that, I'm going to recall what localization means and introduce some additional terminology, namely the concept of WE category. So this is short for weak equivalence category, I suppose. And this, uh, so this terminology is used in this uh, book, Common to Believe Factors, and so on by Dreyer, Sean, Kahn, and Smith, which develops a theory of localization fairly systematically. Um, and so such a WE category is just a category C with a class of arrows that we call weak equivalences, and that satisfy the 3 for 2 condition, which says that if in a commutative triangle, two of the arrows are weak equivalences, then so is the third. Um, okay, so given a WE category, the homotopy category um, that I write Ho of C, that but I normally will call localization, so I'm using say homotopy category and localization interchangeably, and that's the category that's obtained by freely inverting the weak equivalences. Yes. <coughs> so more precisely, the universal property of the localization. So there's a localization factor which has the universal property that for any category X, functors from the homotopy category to X correspond to functors from the WE category to X which invert weak equivalences. And um, yes? Sorry, are these one categories or series of categories? These are one categories. I would have mentioned if I was talking about the finished case. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little jet lagged and at CMU these, at CMU these days, people seem to... And another question, yes? Yeah, I remember there was a definition of the homotopical categories, which has the 2 of 6 property. Uh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this talk. I mean, okay. it's... Because they were better behaved. So I'm actually not, never using the 3 of 2 condition. So it's just... A convenient part. So I mean, the set thing is that we're interested in our localizations, and we could say that W is saturated if it's precisely the class of arrows that is located uh, that is inverted by the localization. So actually, I want this would be the most sensible concept, but I'm gonna use this intermediate concept of W. Doesn't really matter. Um, okay. So I emphasize. So if you want to draw this triangle saying that for any f here that inverts uh, weak equivalences, there exists a unique f here yes, such that this computes, but I emphasize that it's a two-dimensional two universal property. So 
So we get to not only get a rejection between all sex, but between all categories. And so this this is an isomorphism of category, of categories, not only of sex. Um, so uh, okay, so now the theorem is that this one is a localization, so from the uh, the set portion completion to the exact completion of H is a localization. Um, and how do you show it? Well, we have to find a function. So, given a function here, that should send string equivalences to ISOs. We have to define a function here. Well, uh, given a morphism here, which is a function in relation, we write it as a span like this. So, um, I define an intermediate object on the product of A and B, where the partial equivalence relation is somehow obtained by combining rho, sigma, and phi. And so then this span lives up here, so I send it down, and the left leg gets inverted, so I get a morphism here. So that's basically how it works, and then you can easily show that this is unique. And you can also verify this two-dimensional property Okay, so that's great. So in the paper, I actually do a little bit more, and I even show that there's a structure of a category of vibrant objects on this thing. So a category of vibrant objects also has a class of vibrations that is somehow satisfies some compatibility condition with the weak equivalences, satisfies some axioms. But actually, we don't need this. We only need the weak equivalences to say what a localization is and to prove that this is a localization. So I'm going to skip the category of fragment object structure here um, and then instead move on to derived functors. Um, so, uh, what is that about? So, the motivation is that. Given a natural transformation between the regular hyperdoctrines, which preserves all of regular logic, the universal property of the localization implies that we get a functor between the exact completions. Well, I mean, so the universal property of the localization is one way of getting a functor between the exact completions from a transformation. You can also just apply the transformation to the partial equivalence relations and functional relations. And then all these judgments that I showed you earlier are preserved by uh, phi if phi um, preserves all of regular logic. And it's intermediate, it's immediately you get a functor. However, sometimes you also get a functor between the localizations, between the exit completions, if the uh, phi only preserves finite means phi by one. And okay, in the following I want to explain this using the language of derived functors, which is a concept of monotony theory. So I want to recall what I mean by derived functors. So again, I'm referring to this book. And so given uh, W and E categories, C and D, with localization functors E and E prime, and a functor between the categories in C to D, so a total right derived functor of F is a left card extension of the composite <laughs> F followed by E prime along E. And a left derived functor is a right card extension. So that's a bit confusing, but so this is which of left and right between category theorists and out of theorists, something you have to be aware of. And so I want to use this terminology of the right functor, but for triangular diagrams, I'm going to continue to say can extension. So a derived functor, if f is not a can extension of f, but a can extension of the localization followed by s. So yeah. in this situation, I use this derived functor and get a can extension. Um, OK. So, and here I have an explanation of why the terminology switches around. Um, so, as I told you earlier, this 
I emphasize that the universal property of localizations is that pre-composition with the localization gives an isomorphism of categories between factors here and factors here that invert uh, equivalences. In particular, pre-composition with a localization is always fully faithful. And so factors where the pre-composition is fully faithful are uh, sometimes called absolutely dense. And I also call them co-fully faithful, which is a more meaningful or more uh, memorable terminology. And now, uh, if you take time extensions along absolutely dense functors, then you always, and if the left and the right time extension exist, then you always get uh, uh, a two cell from the right can extension to the left can extension by uh, some arguments that are uh, similar to in cohesion. You know, one, if one has a cohesive torpos, one gets uh, a natural transformation from the discrete functor to the co discrete functor, from the, connect, from the points of a space to the connected components of a space. And that is always, if one has a triple of adjoints where either the middle functor or the outer functor is fully faithful, but then one gets this comparison to things. And so here one gets a transformation from the right hand extension to the left hand extension. So, and this, I think, is kind of related to the reason why homotopy theorists call the right hand extension the left right functor, because here it appears on the left. Um, okay. So here's an abstract criterion for the existence of derived functors. Um, so, and I want to call an object of a WE category protofibrant if for any other object A, the uh, functor or the function that is introduced from the functor that maps morphisms from A to X morphisms in the homotopy category from e to a to e to x is subjected. Um, so, um, yeah. So, how why is this related to vibrancy? Well, what in the so if you have a model structure, then between fiber Fibrant and co fibrant objects, one can always get the morphisms in the homotopy category as a quotient of the morphisms in the original category. This, also, this is a similar condition, the universal subjectivity condition, so this is a quotient of this one. And, and then, dually, I want to say that uh, A is proto co fibrant if it uh, satisfies the dual condition. Mm -hmm. And so now we have this nice uh, criterion that says that if uh, I have a WE category with enough protofibrant objects, meaning that every object admits a weak equivalence to a protofibrant object, and a factor into an arbitrary category such that this implication holds, saying that if two parallel arrows are identified by E, then they are identified by F, then we have a left hand section. So that's a criterion I would be interested here, if you have anybody has seen something like this in homotopy theory. Um, and so we can use this criterion um, essentially to construct uh, the right factors in the situation of very regular Iba doctrines. So for this, let's first try to understand what proto-fibrancy means in the setting where we have the exact as a localization of the descent portion completion. So amorphism in the descent portion completion of H, I'm oh, sorry, object in the descent portion completion is protofibrant if every functional relation comes from a map in the original category. And so this is condition is known to many of you as the functional relation having a tracking map. So there's somehow uh, a map in the base category that satisfies this judgment. 
And this likely means that if we apply the functor that I defined earlier, we get back to function relation. Um, and so it turns out that for protofibrancy, this condition is known in the literature already from the first paper on triprocess, it's Hannah Johnson Pitts paper that Pino mentioned earlier, and there it's called weakly complete. So an object is weakly complete if it satisfies uh, this condition that every arrow into it is a tracking map. And in this paper, we, uh, it's shown that triprocess always have enough weakly complete objects, or rather the the uh, z-portion completions of triprocess have enough uh, weakly complete objects. And this is used to construct geometric morphisms from functional solutions. So now, what about the dual condition, proto co mm -hmm. Um Well, this is related to what I call exists prime predicates, um, which is also in the uh, Recent papers by Mayetti, uh, Torres, Barrett, and Fiber, this condition is called existent, existential freeness. And so that's a condition that is related to uh, the notion of an element of a complete lattice being completely joined prime. So an element of a complete, of a complete lattice, P in L, is called completely joined prime if. Whenever the element is under some arbitrary join, then it is already under one of the uh, things constituting the join. And so now if you want to reformulate this vibrationally and want to say the vibrational analog of join is existential quantification, uh, then you get a condition that where well, you have to close and the re-index so you say that a predicate pi is exists prime if every reindexing of pi, whenever it's under the exists of some other predicate, then there exists a section such that it's under the pullback of this thing along the section. The section corresponds to a, well, to a choice to this exists basically, the text prime exists. Um, okay, so now it turns out that. Um, so, the, so the interesting the, state, the conclusion is that um, if a regular hyperdoctrine has enough exists prime, prime predicates, then the uh, set portion condition has enough proper profile objects. And so, more precisely, uh, an object A row is prototype co vibrant whenever its support is, um, is exists prime. But the support of a partial equivalent simulation has just been pulled back from the diagonal. Um, okay, so these are the criteria for the existence of a joint functors, that of derived functors, and um, under the idea. Uh, So, so combining this criterion for existence of time extensions along local equations and these criteria for the existence of vibrant or programming objects, uh, we get the following. So given a, a finite weak preserving transformation between regular hyperdoctrines, if the domain regular hyperdoctrine has enough exists prime predicates, then the induced factor between the portion completions is a left derived factor, and if the domain is a tribus, then the induced factor between the portion completions is a right derived factor. And as I already mentioned, the uh, first criterion was uh, used in this paper by Heinrich Johnson and Pitts, where they consider um, geometric morphisms of triposes, where the left adjoint always preserves regular functors, but the right adjoint does not necessarily. And so for the right adjoint to get um, uh, to get a functor out of it, you have to apply this trick of completion. And so 
for the left derived functors. Uh, so I tried a while to come up with some examples. So here's uh, one example that I came up with. So if we have the local operator on the effective tripos, or the Lavertini topology on the effective tripos, corresponding to Lifshitz reliability, I think Jan also mentioned that earlier. So this is a finite weak preserving transformation of a tripos. And it turns out that, that the effective tripos has enough existing prime predicates. And therefore, we can construct both the left and the right derived functor. And then the right derived functor is just the reflection of the subtotals. And the left derived functor is the reflection of the separate separate objects. Um, OK, so this is one example of the one can what one gets out of this criterion. Um, okay, now I want to use the remaining time to give you some reformulation of this technology. Well, not reformulation, but sometimes how this, how this fits into the framework of equipment. Um, so, again, on the level of WP categories, uh, so assume we have WE categories with enough profile objects, C and D. I want to call a factor F from C to D congruent if it satisfies this criterion for the existence of a right derived factor um, to this implication of the qualities. And I want to call F exact if it preserves the equivalences. Um, so now, um, it turns out that, um, so if I have a composition of concrete functors, we have this funny uh, phenomenon. So let's say that C, D, and E, and I have the localizations, O, C, O, D. Category in which category, which is a notion of 
And in two category bridge categories, there is where we have filtered notion of fire junction, and then we control the so there's inclusion of equipment from cats to make equivalent categories with enough of fire objects. On in fact we have a trivial equipment structure where all arrows are regular. And we make sure that this morphism of equipment with special functor has a special left wire joint. And so this is uh, gives some kind of conceptual explanation of similar statement in this paper where I describe the driver's nose construction in terms of equipment statements. Um, okay, I think my time is pretty much up. Uh, so I maybe I'm gonna skip this and I just want to mention uh, so there are two re related papers to the uh, so there's this paper by Yard, the motion of Honor before the effect of topos. Um, which was inspirational for uh, what I was telling you about. And there's this notion by Beno, where he also uh, did a lot of polymorphism, uh, where Beno also gives a description of the effective topos of the homotopy category. And where's Beno? And thanks for acceptance to the, some helpful discussions. We talked about this. Uh, Worked twice, once in Hamburg, once in Bonn, I think. And once you mentioned this uh, co fibrant objects in uh, categories of fibrant objects, which like, let me to understand this stuff about the left and right factors. Thanks a lot for that. And that's it. Thanks very much. Yes. You 
qua è perché Ted Topping is what we call di Davide full existential, quindi there are two bags, eh, sorry, two bags, there are infectional goals for any, uh, yeah. is, uh, for any left account to any long many men. So, yeah, all I, all yes, I was wondering about the localization, because the localization resembles what we call the regularization. Yeah. That you take it, 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 so, it, it might be that the, the regularization, regularization because you have a, a doctrine, which is existential and, uh, and uh, elementary, and uh, elementary is not You can make the subcategory out of it. Mm -hmm. Why do it? Because the doctors. Yeah, like this. And then you can do... But why do you call it regular uh, Because uh, you can see that as a decomposition of the, uh, the, the addition of the comprehension plus uh, a more uh, basic uh, operation which turn uh, the existential and the elemental of the document with comprehension into a regular vector. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah. I am interested in seeing that if the localization you showed mm -hmm. is a special It's general way to see regular, regularization of doctrines of the doctrine. So, I mean, since you're not, I, I was asking why you say not really, uh, regularization because on the slide that I did show you, uh, here, I make the remark that you get a regular completion of a regular doctrine by, as a localization of the doctrine. So maybe that's what you're saying. Really yeah. Because uh, the usual construction of completeness for a uh, document with respect to record, uh, what do you, why do you call regular document? It's related to this construction. But we can discuss later because there are many things to say. So, I uh, just one remark. So, I said that I agree with need the stronger picture of evolution. But now that I think about it, maybe I, I only need it for the structure of the category of fiber objects, which I skipped. So, ah, maybe, so you, maybe need I don't need that. you need that. Then. I, I need the stronger vector of recognition ah. for the category of other objects. But not for the localization. Maybe not for the localization. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other question? Yeah, uh, I'm very happy to put this slide on as well, because it's related to my question as well. So here you've got the, um, you, the SH, is the gross unit construction of the. Yeah, yeah, so this is the. Yeah. yeah. And then we're saying that you know that, that, that then embeds into what you call C angle H, right? Because if we it does not embed maps, there's a factor, but it's and I, yeah. Yeah. So we have mm -hmm. uh, C H. Yeah, I guess they brought the construction maps here. Um, but there is, I mean, what I want to say is that we have CH, and here, let's call it, is this one of the E? No, so the picture that I have in mind is, so this is a localization, this is E, And then here we have the property construction uh, that maps over here and it also maps down here. That's the localization. Yes. Um, so you say that H is right, but then the bottom left hand corner, that's the map of you don't take the parts of the equivalence relations, you take all the frequently functional relations. Exactly. So the objects here are not partial equivalence relations, but fragments. Mm -hmm. So they are the sub diagonal objects here. Yeah. And, and so what's the map at the top? That's the one which sends like the, the indexing objects. And yeah, the so I map F I phi here, yeah. and I would send it to I, and I would write it equality restricted to phi. Okay. And why and you say that's not the heading? Or like it's, I don't think it's fully faithful in general. Is that for Oh faithful? sorry, yeah, that it will be faithful. No, not necessarily. I mean, if you have a lot of, if phi is false, then you can have different functions that will become equal here if the predicate is false. Mm -hmm. 